On this episode of the Ask Mike Ronald Show, we talk about some strategies that we use when patients have a knee extension lag following surgery. The Ask Mike Ronald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am up in Boston at Champion P Team Performance with uh, our team of amazing performance-based therapists and coaches here. Um, answering your questions. Um, as always, we're here for you. Um, let me see, what do we have this week? We have Kevin Coughlin, Dan Pope, Lisa Lowe, Lenny Macrina, and Duesh Podell all here for you and your questions. So uh, Len, I think we have yes. some students, right? We do, we, have, uh, we do have some students. We met They're Kim amazing. last week. Amazing. I mean, yes. <laughs> who, who will we be meeting this week? This week, um, we have three glorious and amazing students. We have Zach Atwood from Wayne State University College. I think it's a university. It's a university in Detroit, Michigan. We have Morgan Kennedy from Findlay University in Findlay, Ohio. Fun fact about Morgan, she is a PTA and went back to PT school. So it's valuable for her to- uh, I feel like we, we, may have to have, we may have to do an episode with her on that here because we do get that question yeah. a lot, so. Yeah. And we have Kim Lay from Marist College in Marist, America. And no for those that state. for those that are just listening and aren't watching the video on YouTube, Morgan had jazz hands after she was introduced, which I think was maybe the first. I don't think the Gabinator ever did that or anything, but um, <laughs> I, I don't think that was a, I think that was the first. But good jazz hands on that one. So, uh, what do, what do we get for a question today? All right, so we got Tom from New York asking, following a knee surgery like ACL reconstruction, what do you do if a patient is having a hard time completing a straight leg raise without, ext without extension lag? Would performing the exercise with a brace locked in extension be appropriate? Awesome, yeah, great question, Tom. Good job, Zach. Um, yeah, that's pretty common, right? Like that's that's definitely something we see that um, I, this is probably a pretty good question because I bet you a lot of people, you know, see this and it would be nice to just kind of hear everybody's tips on what we do, right? So, you know, ACL is probably one of the more common ones, but it really could be from from any knee surgery, that, that knee extension lag where they're trying to do a straight leg raise, but they don't have that quad control to lock out the knee and do it straight. I mean, it, essentially, it's just a sign that the quadricep strength is just not there, right? Or it's, it's just not active, um, uh, uh, for that ability to lift that leg straight. So um, wh what do we get for tips on, uh, on that? I mean, I think we got a few tricks up our sleeves with that, but who wants to jump in and offer the first tip of advice for what you do with a, uh, uh, a lag with a straight leg raise? Is that what the question is? I'm confused by the question. Oh, I'm just... Yeah. Are you serious? I can't tell. I can't tell if you're serious. <laughs> it says without an extension lag. So if they don't have an extension lag, uh, is it something else? Am, am I just not understanding the question? No, you're definitely not understanding the question. Is it, it what do you what do you do if a patient is having a hard time completing a leg raise Complete. without, without. A lag? Oh. <laughs> so if they don't, if they without a lag, that means the left knee is straight. <laughs> So you're so, criticizing Tom for lack of a comma, I, I believe, because I think the comma just changes it. Wow. I don't, maybe, I, I'll, we'll assume they're having a lag because in the question it says like without this. an extension lag. Grammar police. This is why, by the way, Lenny edits all of our manuscripts, just so you know, when we, <laughs> when we have publications. But, uh, but uh, let's just assume... He has a lag. The, the obvious, and uh, and we'll yeah. go from that. But okay. what do you do, Len? I, sure. I I know you have some nuggets <laughs> of information here for us, and not just yeah, grammatical I mean, critiques. But uh, but what do you got? I'm just making sure we answered Tom, <laughs> Tom Tom's question. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean obviously the obvious is going to be uh, using stim. I would try to stim the quads. Um, some NMES, not tens or anything like that, but um, stim um, that can help to facilitate the quads to contract better. And then 
thinking about reasons why this could potentially happen. Um, do they have excessive swelling in the knee joint that could cause some uh, quad inhibition or excessive quad inhibition? So we had to get the swelling out. Um, patella mobility. Can they get the patella to lock into the trochlea um, and be able to raise the leg, get the knee straight? That would be another another issue. Um, you could even try to put them in sideline. So take gravity out and put them in a sideline position and have them do an abduction raise and then raise uh, out to the side. So kind of uh, parallel to the floor. So use gravity as not uh, res resisting the leg. Um, you could put them in a brace. I don't often do that because not everybody has a brace after an ACL surgery. Um, but at least what I see, they mainly do. But not everybody uses a brace, believe it or not. So you can't always assume they have a brace. Um, if, but those if, are, you have a, if you have an extension leg too, oftentimes you still have that in the brace. I mean, these braces aren't magically right. locking yeah. you out at zero right. too. That's right. that is an issue. So that's I, I, yeah. that's like a band aid. That's not like you know part of the issue. Right, right. And I would I would assist too. So some people need that little extra push. So I'll hold them by their ankle and give them an assist up, and maybe they do a quad set at the top and really have them lock in while I'm assisting. And I think that can help as well. So, and just doing a ton of quad sets. So if they can't get that quad to engage and lock the knee straight, then their homework is gonna be stim with quad sets obsessively at home. Like they're doing not just uh, two sets of 10 uh, twice a day. They are doing it all day, every day until something gives and they're icing a ton at home as well. So those are my big nuggets. I, I like Some how you brought without... up. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> without the laugh. <laughs> I um uh, I I like how you bring up a couple of big topics that actually have nothing to do with the lag but maybe they're creating the lag, right? Like the swelling, right. the pain, the patellar mobility, like I especially you know if you ACL with a patellar tendon graft, you know maybe it hurts in that area when they contract. So, you know, sometimes right. it's not just how do we fix the lag, but what do you have to what do you have to work on to get rid of the lag? Um I really I really like how you uh you know you brought that point up. Um what else? What do you do, Dan? I think it's just kind of silly, but I, oftentimes I think the straight leg raise might not be coached appropriately. You know, typically I think I'm coaching, I'm thinking I'm coaching like a snatch or something, but straight leg raise, most folks, their first repetition, you say, get your leg as straight as you can, right? First rep actually looks pretty good. They're struggling, they're working in the next like 10 to 15 that just let the knee bend and keep going. Um, one of the things I like to do is just put something underneath the heel. So every single repetition, they relax fully. They get the knee into extension or hyperextension as much as they can, flex, try to get a good quad set, and then raise up and reset every single repetition. Just because I find that folks don't, you know, perform their straight leg weight raise in a way that's going to reduce the the quad lag. They just keep on going with the bent knee, and they're probably not getting the result they want. So, right. And remember, I, I think you you said that well. Where it's it's sometimes that's coaching based. Remember, they're just trying to get from point A to point B, which is just lift their leg up into the air. If you don't instruct them on how, then sometimes it's the path of least resistance. So your hip flexor is in a good spot. They're just going to raise that leg up and they don't really care about the position your knees in. So that makes it really, really important, really emphasize, hey, you know, you know, you know, contract that quad, squeeze that quad, or what would we say in Alabama? We'd say mash that quad, right? Mash that Ma knee straight mash that knee straight as straight as we can and then lift that leg up and then what i often do with that coaching cue is if they start to lose that or they're starting to get tired we actually say, whoa, whoa, whoa stop that rep let's start over and and do it again remember it's as much neuromuscular control as it is a strength deficit with that so i i think that's huge i want to we got to get a video on instagram of you coaching this too i want to see somebody like maybe they chalk up right maybe we're doing some like big motivation on this but <laughs> <A> whistle <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, but, uh, I, but I think that's I do want to add, I do want to add one more thing though. Um, cause I've seen this a couple times. Um, if you, if this person is having a, a lag with their leg raises and it's like way out of surgery, like something unusual, like a, not just a few weeks, like eight weeks, 12 weeks, and they're still struggling. You get to start thinking about, um, did they have a femoral nerve block and is that affecting them? So did they have, is the nerve, uh, that innervates the quad um, not firing appropriately and or was it a tourniquet thing did they use a tourniquet during the surgery or did they use a femoral nerve versus an adduct a canal block and that could affect i've seen people have um, quad issues long term like for the rest of their lives if they've had a femoral nerve block that went crazy and now their nerve is not functioning correctly so that's another thing too if it's depending on where this person is in their rehab a couple weeks out not surprising it can happen but a couple months out you start running into other issues. So I would keep that in mind as well. I like that. Yeah, it's good. Anybody else have any other tips that uh, Lenny and Dan didn't cover? 
I mean, this is a pretty straightforward one. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the only thing I would add with this is that, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, one thing that I would do is that, you know, Lenny said a lot of quads has quads has quads has, but I think sometimes we can do that poorly, right? Like maybe like at home, they're doing it on the couch, right? So, you know, inherently just your butt's going to sit into the cushion and you're going to be in a flex knee position on the couch. Like you have to really educate them that, Hey, you got to prop that heel up. I think Dan mentioned that a little bit is prop that heel up. Uh, sometimes I like to do a reverse though, sometimes, and not everybody has a knee extension, like recurve bottom, like excessive hyperlaxity, but sometimes I'd, I just want them to do a quad set and start with your heel on the ground. And then my cue, my coaching cue is to lift your heel up off the table. Right. So that way they're not really focused on their quad. They're focused on lifting that heel up and then they understand that appreciation of like that locked out mechanism. Right. So, um, you know, I'd say that's just one other thing to do is maybe sometimes change like the focus to an external focus with, with, with what they're doing with the movement at the heel and not at the hip, I think sometimes may, may have an impact too. So, um, I think we nailed it pretty good. I mean, we talked about some of the external factors, uh, Kevin, you want to add something? Yeah. I just want to say, um, one, one piece of equipment we have here that I found super helpful for this is kind of the M trigger, the biofeedback. Mm. Um, you know, I think kind of to Dan's point, sometimes these people can do it for one or two repetitions and then they think they're contracting as hard throughout the whole set. Um, but sometimes just with that visual feedback to see this is how hard you need to be contracting. Um, you know, some of the things Lenny mentioned, you know, if they just can't do it, you know, it's not going to be as helpful, but I think sometimes it's just them learning. Um, this is how hard I need to contract my quad during a set of straight leg raises. That visual feedback could be super helpful sometimes. Good one. Yeah. Good yeah. Point. That's, that's, a, that's a really good point too, of getting that feedback and, and using a biofeedback system like the M trigger. That actually makes sense. That's a good point. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you said that because I think that's, I, I, with a question like this, sometimes we, we miss one or two things because it's like, you know, it just, it's like kind of second nature for what we do. But I think that's, that's a great point. But, you know, again, just kind of recap quickly. It's, you know, make sure you, there's, you're addressing the underlying things that may be inhibiting that. So, you know, assuming it's not a nerve block, issue but you know swelling pain patellar mobility <clears throat> range of motion maybe they don't have the the yeah, full motion exactly. to get pa passive extension, extension. Yep. you know yep. get to nail that down first and then really work on that quad control with you know you can use neuromuscular stimulation to help uh at the same time we can also use feedback uh biofeedback to, to actually help them facilitate that contraction on their own and just really make sure we're coaching and cueing that there's there's tons of ways that that you can do that but hopefully some of these tips um, will help you get that uh, extension lag uh, passed in a little bit quicker for somebody post-surgery. So um, great question. Appreciate it, Tom. That was good. Um, please, in the future, make sure you only submit grammatically correct questions or you will be, you, Sorry. you will be, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, uh, but I, I don't know, maybe I just, I read quickly, but I, I thought your question was great, Tom, but thanks so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. If you have a question like that and aren't afraid of submitting a grammatical error, please head to Mike Round <laughs> Com, click on that podcast link and you can submit as many typos as you want. I can't wait to see them and we'll see you on a future episode. Thanks so much.